Whenever we in the university accept federal funds for our research programs, we're under an obligation to ensure that the research that's conducted using those funds is free of bias, but we're also under an obligation to ensure our sponsors and the public, the taxpayers at large, that the funds will be administered, that we will have procedures in place to ensure that there's no undue personal financial gain from the use of the funds that have been provided for research programs. Of utmost importance is the objectivity of research, but also the financial administration is equally important. So we're under a couple of different regulatory schemes. Uh, the same uh, rules that govern the use of federal funds also talk to conflict of interest, but usually when we talk about conflict of interest or we think about the regulatory framework, we're thinking about the guidelines that NIH and NSF have set forth. They were first published in 1995, and we've been working under the same set of regulations ever since. They've been modified from time to time, and I think we can expect them to be modified again every now and then. Basically, they say that every institution has to have a written policy about conflict of interest, and that we'll have our investigators disclose at least once a year any potential conflicts of interest, and that we'll take steps to effectively eliminate or manage any conflicts of interest in the design, conduct, or reporting of research. But the, the policies and the regulations themselves don't prescribe the methods of which you have to go about providing the implementation of this. Or, you know, they, they basically are giving you guidelines and this is what you need to be. We want to achieve, if we're going to be loaning or, or awarding this money to you, we want to achieve objectivity in the research. It's up to you as an institution to determine how you're going to implement this. Absolutely. It's part of our academic responsibility to ensure that the research is conducted properly, but we're left to our own institutional policies on exactly how we do that. Uh, there is regulatory oversight, of course, there always is, but it's up to the, each institution to promulgate its own rules and regulations. So it's important for, for the faculty members to recognize the fact that if they may hear different things at different institutions, institutional culture does creep into how these uh, uh, institutions themselves actually govern their policies and procedures in regard to this uh, conflict of interest and compliance. Absolutely, and there's another factor that we have to be sure we remember, and that is for public institutions, you may also have state ethics laws that um, have to be taken into account when you're structuring your conflict of interest management programs.